and welcome to the Outsiders Channel. I'm your host, The Batman. Today, we are covering our continued investigation into the China threat. For those who have been following us for years on our social media pages, already know most of this intel. Since then, this threat has expanded exponentially. We've put together the first beginnings of our investigation back in 2012. I was warning everyone back then, my, how time flies. I will lay out eight detailed data sets. These sets is a brief history of how the China threat came to fruition. Then, I will detail how that initial setup has been interwoven into the fabric of America to this very day. This is what I call the big lie and high level treason. This threat level is real. Following up, I also have extensive footage put out by the FBI detailing spies working for the PRC, that's the People's Republic of China, engaged in dead drops in various locations throughout the United States. I will also present in this video unsealed indictments on several individuals engaged in a spy cell network. Feel free to pause video, screen grab, take notes, download, re-upload, whatever it takes. Grab some coffee and roll up your sleeves. It's about to get real. And be sure to share this broadcast. Everything has already been cross-referenced and verified. This will be an ongoing investigation, so expect more series like this to be exposed on our channel. Many decades ago, the U.S. gave China eminent domain over U.S. property. Here are the data sets outlining, outlining rather, that plan of how China through the so-called global elite deep state was to take over the U.S. Data set number one. China begins its covert war on the free American Republic in the 1950s by taking over much of the pharmaceutical drug manufacturing for American and British Big Pharma. This is an outgrowth of the Rothschild's opium ring processing by the British West Indies Company during the 1800s and is brokered by the City of London and Washington, D.C. Data set number two, arch illuminist and Satanist Henry Kissinger normalizes trade relations with China during the Nixon years. Data set number three, eventual LDS or the Church of Latter-day Saints Mormon Church President Gordon B. Hinckley via the church-owned Polynesian Cultural Center in Hawaii establishes a hard currency pipeline with Beijing exchanging bank trade credits for CIA British MI6 drug services rendered into hard gold and silver while hiding behind a cloak of world religion. This is facilitated via the LDS church built and controlled in Shenzhen Special Economic Zone adjacent to Hong Kong. When Hinckley is made LDS president, his first official visit as world prophet to China, where the Chinese communist leaders give him a hero's welcome and a confetti parade. Data set number four, Arkansas natives, Bill Clinton and Sam Walton the founder of the Global Walmart franchise. The elite family of the late Sam Walton currently pockets 
$70,000 USD an hour. Massively increased contracts with China's factories over 2,000%. This results in a tremendous imbalance of trade with China. Thanks to Mormon's special economic zone, China's communist leaders began amassing incredible real wealth in gold and silver. Data set number five. China purchases trillions of dollars worth of U.S. Treasury bonds and bills, paying for it with gold and silver provided by the Shenzhen Economic Zone exchanges. Most of the U.S. national debt is purchased from the private Federal Reserve banks in this matter. And the Federal Reserve is America's central bank controlled by the European Central Bank. Data set number six, Dr. Jeff Taubenberger of the U.S. Institute of Pathology in Fort Detrick, Maryland, the world headquarters for biologic weapons development, successively maps the genome of the 1918 killer flu virus responsible for the 1918 pandemic that killed millions of people. The worst killer virus ever to plague mankind is now ready to be used as a covert weapon disguised as natural influenza mutations. This began the trickle-down effect on how the scientists actually invents the plagues in their sophisticated laboratories to unleash upon the world. And by the way, to those radio and talk show hosts, etc., the real elite are the scientists. They need the global financiers like the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, etc., to finance their operations. I know what you're thinking. What does this has to do with China? I'll get to that in a minute. That is set number seven. In July 2005, the Illuminati-controlled United Nations announces that the world is long overdue for an influenza pandemic. The H5N1 was then born. The avian flu is wrongfully demonized as a cover. In December 2005 of that same year, the Chinese Defense Minister, Qi Haishan, delivers a speech to the Chinese military leaders outlining the inevitable expansion of China into Canada, the U.S. and Australia. He justifies this because of Chinese racial superiority and thus eminent domain. To accomplish this, America would first have to be cleansed by means of a powerful biological weapon causing 150 to 200 million American deaths. China began buying oil and gas futures, spiking the worldwide prices to historic levels. That is set number eight. China agrees to continue investing in U.S. Treasury bills only after securing the right of eminent domain to physically repossess foreclosed American private properties. This move is the equivalent of an unconditional surrender following a bloody war. This also gives the Chinese military the legal right to use biological weaponry to clean up America all at once. It gives them the legal right to use deadly force in removing trespassing Americans from occupying Chinese real estate. Ladies and gentlemen, that is just a brief background of how China slowly became a global threat. The Fed's guaranteed eminent domain as collateral to China for U.S. debts. Beijing, China, sources at the United States Embassy during the Obama administration that in Beijing, China, have confirmed that the United States of America has tendered to China a written agreement which grants to the People's Republic of China, the PRC, 
an option to exercise eminent domain within the USA as collateral for China's continued purchase of U.S. Treasury notes and existing U.S. currency reserves. The written agreement was brought to Beijing by former Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton and was formalized and agreed to during her trip to China when she was in office. This means that in the event of the U.S. government defaults on its financial obligations to China, the Communist government of China would be permitted to physically take inside the USA land, buildings, factories, perhaps even entire cities to satisfy the financial obligations of the U.S. government. Put simply, the feds have now actually mortgaged the physical land and property of all citizens and businesses in the United States. They have given to a foreign power the constitutional power to take all of our property as actual collateral for continued Chinese funding of U.S. deficit spending and a continued carrying of U.S. national debt. This is an unimaginable betrayal a very unimaginable betrayal of every man, woman, and child in the USA. This was, of course, all done in secret under the Obama administration. The current administration and patriots, for those who aren't aware, the patriots are the United States military and allies who are aiding them in their own investigations. Eminent domain is the power of government to take pr private property for public use without the consent of the property owner. Under our Constitution, the government can only take when providing just compensation for what they've taken. Who decides what constitutes just compensation? The government? Homeowners who felt the government was not paying them enough for property in the past takings have filed lawsuits in absolutely every such case the value placed upon the property by the government was upheld by the courts. The federal government under the Obama administration granted to China this power. Do that. The Chinese, what are the Chinese up to when it comes to uh, counterintelligence operations and bad things? <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, I would say that there is no country that poses a more severe counterintelligence threat to this country right now uh, than China. And I That's say saying a lot. That is saying a lot. Uh, and I don't say it lightly. Who would be second? Uh, probably Russia. What's the difference between first and second? So, all, so China all. is uh, fighting a generational fight here. Uh, and when I say China, I want to be clear. This is not about the Chinese people as a whole, and it's certainly not about Chinese Americans in this country. What it is about, though, is about a country that is, in a variety of ways, through the Chinese government, the Chinese Communist Party, using not just government officials, but private sector entities, uh, non-traditional collectors, uh, et cetera, to steal their way up the economic ladder at our expense. Uh, and we have, as we speak, probably about a thousand plus investigations all across the country involving attempted theft of U.S. intellectual property, whether it's economic espionage or counterproliferation, almost all leading back to China. Uh, and so it is a threat that's deep and diverse and wide and vexing, whether it's in terms of the kinds of actors that are used, the kinds of techniques are used, the kind of targets that are used. Uh, and so we're working extremely hard with all of our partners to combat it. Uh, but make no mistake, this is a, a high, high priority for all of us. Is Russia, are the Russians still trying to interfere in our election system? 
The Russians are, are absolutely intent on trying to interfere uh, with our elections through foreign influence. Is it fair to say that foreign everything, influence in particular. everything we've done against Russia has not deterred them enough? All the sanctions, all the talk, they're still at it. Well, my view is until they stop, they haven't been deterred enough. And, and they're still doing it? Yes. Okay, good. And your testimony said that the United States significantly underestimates the threat of Chinese economic espionage. Uh, what avenues are we seeing where Chinese economic espionage is manifesting? So certainly it, it covers the waterfront in terms of uh, sectors from startups, high-tech companies, all the way to aerospace, to aviation, to agriculture. Uh, we had, uh, you know, a case in Kansas not that long ago where they were attempting to steal, uh, you know, highly proprietary rice seeds that were being developed. You know, the U.S. agriculture is the envy of the world, uh, and that's a place where they've done a number of things. So it covers the whole spectrum of types of sectors, but then in terms of size of businesses, it's Fortune 100 companies all the way down to startups in Silicon Valley, and then in terms of types of techniques. It involves everything from cyber intrusions to corruption of insiders uh, to things that are not illegal but are still a national security threat, different kinds of foreign investment, uh, etc. So there is a, it's kind of an all tools approach by them uh, and it therefore requires an all tools approach by us. Just somewhat similar to the answer I was giving to Senator Kennedy but separately uh, as I think has been testified to publicly. Several years back, the U.S. began the process of reasserting their sovereignty pursuant to the Ninth and Tenth Amendments to the U.S. Constitution, declaring null and void any actions by Congress that violated the Constitution. The states took action to make certain the feds couldn't give away cities or states themselves. Now let's move on to these Chinese trade zones, or better known as foreign trade zones, and special trade zones. This is unbelievable at first, but you will soon realize that there are several motives for the global communists to physically weave our United States territory together with communist China. Each and every one of our state governors has approved and allocated a certain amount of acres of their U.S. state land to be inhabited by Chinese communists, the communists straight from China. They are to set up little towns, China towns, or Asia towns, if you will, and live there supposedly for the purpose of producing Chinese products for sale in the USA. The land the states are giving them for the little towns will be considered foreign territory. We are told that the laws of the state in which the Chinese communists will dwell will apply to the Communist Foreign Trade Zone, or the FTZ. There are 250 seven of these little communist towns all over the United States and more are being added. Our nation is being peppered all over with these communist closed towns called zones. This insane brainstorm by Washington DC officials was recently discovered by alert citizens in the state of Idaho where an FTZ was built there just south of Boise, Idaho. Possibly 30,000 30, acres of Idaho is being used for that FTZ. The excuse given for creating communist towns all over our nation is that these Chinese communists will produce products for sale in the United States and the FTZ will eliminate overseas shipping costs of the products they create. A very bizarre excuse at best. It would not mean jobs for Americans. All the help will be Chinese. Besides, it is to be classed as foreign territory, remember? However, 
We won't know what is really going on inside these enclaves. It is a known fact that China has been preparing for war against the United States. Many guns are pointed at us, and I mean this literally. China recently unveiled the Dongfeng 41 intercontinental strategic nuclear missiles, the country's most advanced and powerful deterrent in a National Day military parade in central Beijing on September 2019. These nukes are capable of hitting the U.S. in 30 minutes after launch. Why should these FTZs be allowed? What is the real reason? Is it that Washington, D.C. needs foreign help to disarm American citizens who have privately owned firearms so that the federal administration can comply with public law 87-297 signed into law by JFK for general and complete disarmament of the United States? It is a law continually financed by Washington, D.C. liberals. That's the law that calls for us to have no more Army, no more Navy, and no more Air Force, all of which is to be transferred over on a permanent basis to the communist-dominated United Nations. That law also prohibits all firearms from being owned by American citizens. China is allowing American businesses to get established in China as FTZs. Americans must build their structures in China, and they must employ all Chinese people to do the work in what is being built there. After a short amount of years, the Americans must vacate, leave the buildings intact, and let the Chinese keep the technology and the active operation as ongoing. With this, what this amounts to is transferring American technology, intellectual property, and management to Communist China. FTZs are also known as SEZs, or Special Economic Zones. Please share this information to all your friends. Someone has to answer for this on all local, state, and federal levels. This is a textbook case on how to set up for sabotage, espionage, and a study on how to take over the whole United States in a war. Because the newspapers and other media are controlled, there would not be reporting on this unless there is a great public outcry. Remember, when being a communist was punishable crime in the U.S., my, how have we changed? A complete reversal. Don't believe me? Well, here's the official interactive map from the enforcement.trade.gov website, which lists every single state that are foreign trade zones, along with the exact cities, addresses, phone numbers, of the contact reps and email addresses of that contact person. I will include the link to the website in the description area to this video so that you may view this interactive map for yourselves. Free trade zones, by the way, are referred to as foreign trade zones in the U.S. This is accordance to the Foreign Trade Zones Act, which was implemented in 1934. China is an ongoing threat to the United States. Right now, the citizens in China are revolting against their corrupt government. Currently, China is the most corrupt police surveillance country in the world. The citizens have now woken up to the government controlling the people, a republic for the people, by the people. The People's Republic of China, or the PRC, is in name only. It's the exact opposite of democracy. The deep state elite, part of their global order agenda, wants China, the new world 
superpower and testing out their agenda in China how they want to control the rest of the world. Meanwhile, you have a Chinese sleeper cell spy network operating on U.S. soil. Take this woman, Eugene Zhang, a 33-year-old Chinese national, was arrested at Mar-a-Lago in Florida. She gave different stories of why she was at the Southern White House. Agents said they seized four cell phones, a laptop computer, and a thumb drive that had malware on it. Eugene Zhang, who said she was sent by a fellow Chinese national named Charles, was charged with making false statements to a federal officer and entering or remaining in a restricted building or grounds. She appeared in U.S. District Court and a public defender was appointed to represent her. Agents said they seized four cell phones, a laptop computer, an external hard drive, and a thumb drive from Zhang. An examination of the thumb drive showed it contained malicious malware. Jurors found Eugene Zhang guilty of trespassing and lying to Secret Service agents after four hours of deliberations and an unusual two-day Fort Lauderdale Federal Court trial initially delayed over Zhang's lack of underwear. Believe that, Zhang, who remains in custody, showed no emotion as the verdict was read, but smiled as she was led out of court. Prosecutor said Zhang was wearing a gray evening gown when she walks into the Palm Beach Resort on March 30th and started taking pictures. She had lied to a Secret Service agent to gain entrance to the swanky club, with prosecutors saying she claimed she was a relative of an actual club member. But a receptionist soon goon Rary as soon as she's entered the lobby. You could see that she was fascinated. She was looking around, the worker, Ariella Grumaz said, adding that Zhang seemed weird and strange. Zhang told Grumaz that she had paid $20,000 to attend a Chinese-American United Nations friendship event that day, which had actually been canceled. That's what prompted Grumaz to flag a Secret Service agent to keep an eye on Zhang. After the agent pulled her aside and searched her phone, she became aggressive. Prosecutor said Zhang was kitted out with electronics including four cell phones, a laptop, and external hard drive. Agents who searched her nearby hotel room found $8,000 in cash and spy-like gear, such as a device to, detecting, to detect rather hidden cameras and numerous credit and debit cards. Zhang, who entered the U.S. on a 10-year visa that she obtained in 2016, also had two passports. Her arrest prompted a probe into whether she was a Beijing spy. Prosecutors offered no explanations in court for her motives. She acted as her own attorney at trial after firing her public defenders in June. She now faces up to six years in prison when she's sentenced on November 2nd of 2019 this year. Intel is already coming in that China is using employment websites to recruit spies. The United States top spy catcher said Chinese espionage agencies are using fake LinkedIn accounts to try to recruit Americans with access to government and commercial secrets, and the company should shut them down. William Evania, the U.S. counterintelligence chief, said intelligence and law enforcement officials have told LinkedIn, the website owned by Microsoft, about China's super aggressive efforts on the website. 
He said that the Chinese campaign includes contacting thousands of LinkedIn members at a time. But he declined to say how many fake U.S. accounts intelligence had discovered, how many Americans may have been contacted, and how much success China has had in the recruitment drive. As to not stare the public, German and British authorities have previously claimed that Beijing is using LinkedIn to recruit sp people as spies, while Russia, Iran, North Korea, and other nations are also said to use LinkedIn and other platforms to identify recruitment targets. The U.S. intelligence official said China is the most prolific and poses the biggest threat. U.S. officials said China's Ministry of State Security, or the MSS, has co-optees individuals who are not employed by the intelligence agencies but work with them to set up fake accounts to approach potential recruits. They said the target includes experts in fields such as supercomputing, nuclear energy, nanotechnology, semiconductors, stealth technology, health care, hybrid grains, seeds, and green energy. About 70% of China's overall espionage is aimed at the U.S. private sector rather than the government stated uh, Joshua Scully, the head of the FBI's intelligence division, which is charged with countering foreign espionage in the United States. He stated, they are conducting economic espionage at a rate that is unparalleled in our history. Some current and former officials pose significant details about their government work history online even sometimes naming classified intelligence units that the government does not publicly acknowledge. The CIA has become a corrupt arm of the government for decades. I call them clowns in America for the simple fact that the CIA only has authority to operate internationally in foreign countries not domestically, yet they have been running covert operations in America for decades. They are controlled by and are the deep state elite, which is why they are running for many governmental offices like Congress and statesmen and etc. For more in-depth analysis into these clowns, please refer to both parts one and two of my DARPA Facebook investigations video. Now take this other guy, Jerry Shun Xing Li, 54 years old, conspired to gather and send secret level information to PRC, the government of PRC. His indictment was uncovered in U.S. District Court in Alexandria, Virginia. A plea agreement reached with federal prosecutors recommends a minimum of 21 years for one charged conspiracy to gather and deliver defense information. Two other lesser accounts were dropped as a result of the plea deal. A naturalized citizen and U.S. Army veteran, Lee, joined the CIA in 1994 and served as an overseas case officer until his resignation in 2007. Prosecutors said in his indictment he specialized in surveillance detection, recruiting informants, and handling classified material. After his stint with the CIA, Lee got into the business of tobacco importation and export in China through he sold a stake in the company in December of 2011. He would later lie about the financial state of the company in interviews with the CIA. 
Prosecutors said in April 2010, Lee had dinner with Chinese intelligence officers where he was offered $100,000 for his cooperation to gather and deliver, deliver rather, secret national information. Lee was then sent tasks by the officers in May 2010 to reveal sensitive information about the CIA, such as other officer locations and phone numbers. After moving back to the U.S. in 2012, Lee was interviewed by the CIA several times and failed to disclose the actual tasks given to him by the Chinese intelligence officers. A thumb drive with this document as well as Lee's notebooks were found by FBI agents during a search of his hotel room in Hawaii in 2012. In his plea agreement, he acknowledged to lying to the FBI in 2013 about creating a document with locations of CIA operations and officers. Now this case, this next case, is the most shocking thus far. I also managed to obtain footage of one of the spy ops in progress. American citizen arrested for acting as an illegal foreign agent of the People's Republic of China. The Department of Justice unsealed charges in a criminal complaint charging Zhua Ping, also known as Edward Ping, 56 years old, for acting as an illegal foreign agent in delivering classified United States national security information to officials of the People's Republic of China, Ministry of State Security, or the MSS. According to the allegations, Ping conducted numerous dead drops here in the United States on behalf of Chinese intelligence officers and delivered classified information to them in China. His arrest exposes and disrupts an operation by those Chinese intelligence officers to collect such information without having to step foot in this country. Attorney General of National Security John C. Demers coming on top of many recent Chinese espionage cases involving both national defense and intellectual property information. This case illustrates the seriousness of Chinese espionage efforts and the determination of the United States to thwart them. The conduct charged in this case alleges a combination of age-old spycraft and modern technology. The defendant, Edward Ping, is charged with executing dead jobs, delivering payments, and personally carrying carrying all those to Beijing, China, secure digital cards containing classified information related to national security of the United States. According to the complaint filed on September 24th of 2019 and unsealed Ping, 56, a U.S. citizen living in Hayward, California, acted at the direction and under the control of MSS officials in China in retrieving classified information passed to him by a confidential human source. This source leaving money behind for the source or both. His activities included one dry run and at least five successful dead drops between October 2015 and July 2018. The dead drop secured in the Bay Area and in Columbus, Georgia. In the June 23, 2015 dry run, no information or money was exchanged. Instead, an empty package was left by the source for Ping at the front desk of the hotel, and Ping later retrieved it. In the first successful dead drop, Ping retrieved a package containing an SD card from the front desk of a hotel. In each of the other four successful dead drops, 
being booked hotel rooms and left a room key to be picked up by the source. Simply unbelievable. I mean, can you exact actually believe this operation has just taken place? Like, what the hell is going on? The screams, infiltration, invasion, installations. They're getting away with this because we Americans perceive the Chinese as not being a threat. And it's not the people, it's the, it's the government, it's the Chinese government are a threat. They're doing this in plain sight and laughing at us behind closed doors while the deep state elite is continually dividing the country based on political affiliation, etc. All type of covert operations are being conducted against the U.S. public. It's time for us to wake the hell up and start seeing the bigger picture, the end game. Ladies and gentlemen, this threat against us is real. No longer should we continue to be and live in apathy. It's like we've become docile. Could it be from the frequencies, from the Gwen stations making us docile? Look, we are facing threats from all sides of the spectrum. If we still don't think spy cells, sleeper cells, assassination cells, black op networks with covert black sites stationed all over the world and in the U.S. doesn't exist, think again. The mainstream media is constantly bombarding the public with untruths every waking moment of the day. 4 o'clock a.m., begins their scripted talking points for the day, then play those same talking points 24-7. It's time for us to wake up to the charade. Ladies and gentlemen, now more than ever, we have to remain vigilant, see something, say something, get prepared, stay prepared, and remember, you are the true resistance. If you are unable to do anything at all, pray.